So recently I was introduced to power carving. Uh, my friend Jay Bates and I went down to uh, Jackson to work in uh, Wayne Brown's shop just to have fun woodworking for a day and we we're going to build a stool, a uh, shop stool or just a stool. And we're going to power carve the top of the seat. Um, and so it was just a lot of fun. So I thought I'd try it myself, but I wanted to take it a step further and I decided to uh, take on the task of power carving an entire rocking chair or a chair. So uh, first I thought, you know, I want to do this in some really nice wood or whatever, but I need to practice. So I'm doing this whole project out of two by fours. Uh, so if I mess up, it's not really a big deal. I've got like 10 or 11 two by fours invested in this project. Um, I'm, I'm borrow borrowing the angle grinder and the disc that uh, my friend Wayne purchased. And so I really don't have a lot to lose except my time. And to me, learning a process or learning to do something um, is not time wasted. So from this whole whole experience, I can definitely say that I've learned a lot. Uh, so there's a lot of glue up involved. Um, I'm gluing up the seat and the back there. Uh, and then after I get all of the pieces planed and jointed and all that, get it, get all the round edges uh, taken off where I've got some nice 90 degree uh, corners because I'm laying out some half lap joints here. And so when I when I put all this together and I go back and carve everything, it looks like just one piece of wood is my idea. That's my thinking. So I've got a plan for this. I, I did everything in SketchUp. So I did all of this beforehand. I know how long to cut my pieces. I know where to put my or to lay out my joints and that kind of thing. So I cut everything out on the bandsaw. I run into a few little issues on the bandsaw trying to cut these things out uh, because some of my pieces were longer than the capacity of my bandsaw which is really the first time that I ran into, into that problem and it's not a big deal I improvised so uh, the joints on the end weren't that big a deal the joints in the middle uh, this one is not a big deal that you're seeing here but some of the pieces were longer I had to take my fence off of the bandsaw and the piece would extend on out and run into the neck of the bandsaw which I made it work um, which I could have done this on say the table saw or uh, using a circular saw or something like that I could have even done this uh, with a chisel if, if I really wanted to uh, but I did basically everything here at the bandsaw which made it really easy I enjoy using the bandsaw so that worked out great now when I get all of the uh, pieces cut, I've got everything cut out, and now I can start kind of putting it together, kind of like a puzzle. And so the two end pieces that you see here are what's going to hold the front and back legs onto the chair. Um, and that's what I'm putting on here. This is one of the front legs. Uh, so I, I want a, a snug fit. I don't want a really a loose fit. And so it just some taps with a mallet, and it goes just it goes right, right into place. Uh, so I was really happy with the way that looked, and I knew then I didn't have to go back and clean up a lot of those joints. So here I am installing some screws just to act as clamps. I will take these screws out once the glue dries. Uh, so I want to get these clamps out of my way. So I do have to keep a few on there, but uh, for the most part, uh, the screws held the front legs um, on their own. Now, this is the seat. The back is laying on the table. Uh, the seat is vertical there, and the front legs are what's up high in a horizontal position. And I'm just trying to get the, the seat and the back lined up. Um, and it is pretty, pretty snug, which this is all a practice, so I'm not really worried about anything uh, busting or anything like that. I just want to try to get it together to where I can carve it out. So now I've got a Forstner bit on my drill. I've taken the screws out and I am drilling a, a hole the same size as the dowels that I'll be using. So once I get the holes drilled with a Forstner bit, I just clean it up with a vacuum and then I can uh, put glue in these holes and then tap in these dowels. Now, one of the last projects that I did, I didn't... Um, flute if, if you will the dowel rods and one of the viewers had mentioned that one of you should have done that to where the glue 
can kind of have somewhere to go around the dials and it was a really good idea so I just take my, my knife and just kind of whittle out some places on the end of that dial to kind of give somewhere for the glue to go uh, push it in as far as I can I'm gonna just tap it in and then just cut the rest of it off so simple as that I really like the way this dial joinery looks with the half laps so there's no metal fasteners in any part of this chair it's all wooden dials half laps and glue so I don't have to worry about when I'm carving if I'm gonna run into you know any kind of screw or nail staple or anything like that so once everything's glued up the chair is uh, basically assembled the glue is dry all the clamps are taken off now I can kind of start laying out what I want this chair to look like and so I kind of take what we did with the stool at Wayne's house and drew out a shape on the seat, kind of like a Maloof rocking chair. And in all reality, just to be honest, this was Maloof rocking chair was the inspiration for this, but it turned out to be nothing like at all, even close to a Maloof chair. Um, I just wanted to see if I can get somewhat close, uh, you know, to a, to a, shaped and curvy chair. So I got all that marked out and now it's time to take the power carver and really just shape this chair out. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of shape the seat. Uh, I knew that I had done this over at Wayne so I felt like I was comfortable with that particular um, method and, and shaping of the seat. So I went with that first just to kind of get back in the groove of things. And so it's really, really hard to go from a hardwood to like pine, a softwood like this, because once the grinder or the disc grabs a hold of this pine because it's so soft, it just wants to just grab and go. So you have to be really careful. Um, I get creative here on the back side, and I just use the shape of the disc to, to kind of give this back some visual interest. Um, I really didn't have any idea. Uh, I knew I made my markings on a lot of the chair, but once I got in there with the power carver, I didn't have any idea of what this was going to actually look like. So some of this was just on the fly. And I used the coarse disc for the entire thing. I didn't try to use the fine disc. I didn't want to take a chance of it grabbing into the chair and digging it down even further. So I just did everything with the coarse disc and then I came back and finished up with the sander. Just kind of smooth out everything but this was a lot of fun it was a great learning experience and I'm, i can definitely see myself doing this in the future but i'm really glad you watched the video if you enjoyed it um, i encourage you to hit the link down below in the description to go over to our website article and check that out i'll throw some pictures in over there um, there's a plan available if you're interested in doing this as well i have links to the power carver and the disc too so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time